The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide. I want to introduce you to a very interesting person. Um, over a year ago, uh, WND.com did a story uh, about Barack Obama's Social Security number. And uh, the source of that story is a private investigator from Ohio. Her name is Susan Daniels. And she says she can prove beyond the shadow of a doubt that Obama has been using a phony Connecticut Social Security number for the past 25 years. Welcome to the show, Susan. Oh, thank you, Joseph. I appreciate you having me on. Well, tell us how you got into this uh, as a you know licensed private investigator from Ohio. Uh, what made you curious about Barack Obama's Social Security number? Well, the thing that that got me thinking was the emergencies about the TARP money, the stimulus money, and where I saw it was going. And one of my clients said to me, I'm not happy about the situation. Why don't you see if you can find anything on him? Uh, never dreaming that I would be able to since he was already president, I accessed some of the databases that I can go to because I'm licensed. And here up pops a Connecticut Social Security number for him. Well, I've been licensed for over 16 years and looked at thousands of Social Security numbers and know that they are issued where you live when you apply for them. And it said the number had been issued between 77 and 79. And I knew that he was in high school in Hawaii at the time and that there was no way that he could have gone to Connecticut and applied for a Social Security number. And, you know, this question has been posed uh, by our own uh, White House uh, press correspondent uh, uh, in press briefings. And uh, I got to tell you, you know, the reaction to the questions is uh, from the administration has just changed the subject. Oh, absolutely, because they can't, they can't explain it away. They have made pitiful attempts, but they cannot explain it away. There would have to be a card that he filled out with the Social Security Administration for him to have that number. Or one of his parents? Uh, or it could have been one of his parents, but his mother was in, in Indonesia at that time, and his father was in Africa. And uh, we, we, there are no records of him ever having lived or worked in Connecticut. Well, uh, we have, uh, with the help of some other people, we have nailed down the exact time frame when he would have had to have gotten it. And it would be the last two weeks of March in 1977. The reason I know that and can prove it is because the person with the number directly in front of his and uh, it, his number ends in two five. Obama's does. I have I have the records for two four and two nine. I was able to get these because these people are both dead, and once you die, there is no expectation of privacy. So these documents came directly from the Social Security Administration, and their numbers were issued in May or I mean in the end of March in seventy seven. So he would have been uh, 15 years old at in that the time. In 10th grade, yep. He if was, indeed he was born in 1961, right. as he claims. So what is your theory about all this, Susan? <laughs> well, he's using a phony Social Security number to hide something from his past, which was probably tied to the original Social Security number he had. What are the consequences of it's a, using it's a felony. A, and w and how would felony charges be brought against you well, know you the know, occupant Congress, of the White House? Congress is in a position to start asking these questions. I have contacted, <laughs> I have contacted Isa Boehner, Cantor, Alan West, my own congressman Steve La Tourette, telling them and sending them copies of documents I have and have been ignored by every one of them. You haven't gotten any response? Not a response. I, I sent the same material four times to Donald Trump, mm -hmm. who I think is a ringer for the Democrats, by the way. Yes, and I'm going to get into that in my own uh, commentary at some point in this show. 
But uh, so what can is there anything that, uh, you know, listeners to this program can do to move the ball, so to speak? Well, yeah, he 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 is using a fraudulent number, which is illegal. The number had been assigned previously to someone else. Um, I spoke in front of a local tea party the other night and I said, this is what you need to do. I said, don't bother emailing or faxing anything to your congressman because they don't read or get any of that information. Their staff sorts it out for them. Call and leave a message and insist that the congressman ask that an investigation be started, and if he is reluctant to do so, that you will never vote for them again. Mm -hmm. Because that's the biggest fear they have of losing that cushy job. Susan, have there been any consequences for for you uh, in raising the uh, visibility of this story? Uh, uh, have you uh, any any bad results? Have you, have you heard from anybody in the administration or you know anybody keeping tabs on you? Well, the only the only interesting thing is in Mar at the end of March, I sent letters to both Holder. Uh, at the Department of Justice and Astro at the Social Security Administration, uh, did, telling them they had a responsibility to the people in this country to, to look into why he's got this Connecticut Social Security number, because they're issued by the address you live at when you apply for them. And I got a letter back about six weeks later from one of Astro's minions saying, we disagree with your conclusions. Now, how can we be absolutely certain that Barack Obama is using the Social Security number that you have checked out? Because I, I can give you addresses for 25 years of, at various law firms, at his home, uh, when he was in Massachusetts going to Harvard, and as a senator in Washington, D.C., showing that Social Security number at that address. You know what's kind of interesting about this and kind of plunges it right back into the news again is uh, this week Barack Obama threatened to withhold Social Security checks uh, from from senior citizens if he doesn't get a deal on the on the hey, debt limit that he likes. Have you ever seen a bigger bully than him? <laughs> ever? He thought, you know, I'm pretty sure that whoever is his handlers never told him to say anything like that because that is beyond stupid. Uh, you know, Social Security funds are totally separate from the government money. He, he can't do anything about that, but he's trying to scare the old people into pressuring their congressmen, and he should be ashamed. Well, Susan, then, as we, I, I can tell you I personally appreciate you stepping forward on this because I know that you, you know, certainly don't have anything to gain as a you know private investigator <laughs> oh, in Ohio no. <laughs> blowing the whistle on uh, the guy I, I can't call him the president but i call no, him I the call occupant him of either. the white house and uh please keep us posted on any developments uh, that occur here if you hear back from uh, any of these investigators any members of congress and so forth and i can tell you that we will continue as i'm sure you know to to push the envelope on this story, just as we did with the birth certificate for almost three years. Yeah, well, I, I really appreciate the fact that World Net Daily wrote about this because Jerry Corsi was the first person that listened to me. Let me ask you this. Any other media come to you and express interest in, in following up on what you discovered? Other than bloggers, no. Isn't that incredible? No, it's not incredible because they're all hiding what they know to be the truth and that he is not eligible to be the president. And to t tell you the truth, I can't wait to see Nancy Pelosi in an orange jumpsuit. Well, thank you, Susan Daniels. We appreciate you, and uh, keep us posted. You uh, know how to get in touch with me if you need me. Yes, I do, and thank you, Joseph, for having me on. The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide.